We're thankful, Lord, that the gospel has come down to the years. Dear Father, we're grateful for the and thankful for the young people of this church, dear God, that have heard the gospel throughout the years, dear God. It makes us also thankful for the ones that came on before us, dear Father. I remember, Lord, just as a child, Lord, that uh, keeps Christ to preach here in this church, dear Father. And remember, don't remember a lot about what the preacher said, but I remember Jesus Christ being preached, Lord, and been preached for years, dear God. We're just thankful that he is. Pray, Lord, that we will always just keep the torch burning, dear God, and the whole world will hear tell of the dear Father, and the gospel will be preached, dear God. We're grateful for all your many blessings. Living our lives, dear God, we reckon for salvation through Jesus Christ, dear Father. We just ask your Holy Spirit be here today, dear God, with this close person, person, heart, heart, dear God. I ask you to be with Brother Kyle. We're just thankful for him, dear God, just lift him up this morning to you, dear God. Just touch his heart, Lord, just put his mind, Lord, what you have to say to us this morning, dear God. Bless this opportunity to go on, dear Father, Lord, this much you said, but I do it for your kingdom. All the prayer requests, Lord, there's so many about us, dear Father, that are hurt. Suffering, Lord, in the hospital, and sick, dear God, we just pray, Lord, to be touching and coming up to the man of the Lord's promise. Provide him with that need and no good, dear God. Amen. 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 Amen.
today. And it was just a song, a very simple song called The Promise is a Promise. But we thought about it because we thought about love at that time and how men and women make promises to each other. Um, we make promises to friends. We make promises to our parents. Sometimes we even make promises to God, but sometimes we don't keep them. And um, the good thing is that He does, and that when He makes a promise, He always keeps it, and you can count on it. So this song is called A Promise is a Promise, and throughout the song, we each chose a promise that was special to us from the Bible. So you'll hear us reciting those as the song goes along. You can know that a promise is a promise
six months to a year, you know that God's doing something in Hickory Grove. And um, it's a miracle. It's, it's been a long time coming, and we were all so excited because um, for a long time we just went through a dry spell, and um, I guess we became obedient, and God just started blessing. And um, we've had, I think, about 14, 15 people join in just the past year. So it's just been a real blessing to see what God's doing here. And uh, we wanted to sing that song because um, it says what God's going to do. God's gonna do what he's gonna do. He's always up to something new, and you never know just who he's gonna use. When he calls your name, my friend, find your place and jump right in if you wanna be in on what God's gonna do. If God has a boat, then he needs building or sea. Thank you. 
Jamie song that Brenda Shepherd had wanted us to learn. And as y'all all know, we're a little bit country, so sometimes when we sing these contemporary songs, they don't sound exactly like the radio. But um, there was another song that um, I have loved for so long by Casting Crowns, and I like their songs. I don't really listen to much contemporary Christian music, but um, I like their song because they always sing about a Bible verse, and it always comes from something from the Bible, and um, I like a lot of their songs, and this one especially touched my heart, called Who Am I, so this is our country version of Who Am I.
It's not what you see that makes me a king, makes me a king to me. If you're here this morning and you're clinging to anything other than Jesus, I want to tell you that Jesus is the only thing you can't cling to. Amen. Amen. And there's nothing else. It says there's no way, no other name whereby men must be saved, as the brothers already quoted this morning. Yet you can be saved except you come through Jesus. That's uh, I know that's a Baptist faith that we believe, and I'm, I'm a strong in my belief of what I stand for. I wouldn't belong to a Baptist church if that's not what I believed in. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that what matters is that you're born again with this life. Amen. That's what matters. I don't 
I care how you grew up. I don't care how big a church, how little a church, uh, what a denomination it was, except you have a personal relationship with Jesus. Uh, you just missed everything that was intended for you this morning. And I'm thankful. I'm clinging to that Savior's hand this morning, Brother Window. I really am. There's nothing else to cling to in this world. A lot of people are clinging to things in this world. A lot of uh, substances, people are clinging to alcohol to bring them a uh, joy and happiness, clinging to uh, drugs and all such of things, clinging to things of the world. There's people uh, clinging to mom and dad's salvation and grandma and grandma's salvation. But I tell you right now, my grandparents, uh, all but one grandmother, have all gone the ways of the earth. They've uh, laid their body down here and then time permits my mom and dad and God don't call me out of here before they do, uh, they'll lay them in the dirt as time comes. That's just how it is this morning. I'm not here to tell you any kind of fairy tale or anything like that, but this is really going to happen one day. This is not a pretend thing that we're here talking about this morning. This is, it said it was appointed to men once to be born and once to die. We're all going to die and go to waste the earth one day. Uh, but it's nothing to be sad about because if you've uh, been born again and you truly have Ask God to come into your life and, and you realize that Christ gave His life on Calvary uh, so that you wouldn't have to die, but that you would live eternally in heaven. Amen. But it takes uh, being born again. It's a free gift. I'm thankful for that this morning. I truly am uh, thankful. Uh, they sung about the promise this morning. I'm so thankful uh, that God made a promise to me when He saved me. He said that He'd never leave me nor forsake me. And I'm Amen. thankful that he's kept that promise. There's a lot of times, Brother David, that I've left him. A lot of times that I've uh, went contrary to God's will and, and got out there following what I thought friends would have me to do. You know, I thought a lot of times growing up in high school and out of high school, I thought, boy, I can have a lot more friends and I can have a lot more fun if I just do uh, what they wanted me to do. But you know what, Brother Wendell? We grew up and those friends went their way and they went that way and they got married had their own families and then it was just uh, me and God just like it was. And I'm uh, starting to believe, I believe you, uh, God's blessed me with a wife and she couldn't be here today. I really was hoping she was going to be able to, but she had to work and she's a nurse and couldn't do anything about that. But God blessed me with a wonderful wife. And I do want to ask you to pray for this as time goes on. Uh, we're expecting a little boy coming in July. It's our first child. And I'd ask you to continue to be with that. I firmly believe in prayer. I believe if I ever get to a point uh, where I don't need prayer, I need a prayer real bad because I'm in bad shape. I always uh, need prayer. But God has blessed me with a wonderful wife. And if time goes on, I hope He blesses me with a wonderful son. Uh, but I cannot guarantee you how long I'll have with Him on this earth. I cannot guarantee you that. But I can guarantee you if you're here this morning and you don't know God, or maybe you do know God and you're just not where God wants you to be, I can guarantee you, as this book tells us plainly, and His sweet spirit tells me daily, and the promise that He'll never leave and forsake me, if you stay with God, I promise you He'll bless you and your family. He'll bless your home. He'll bless you all the days of your life. Am I here to tell you that everything's going to be great and you're never going to have troubles and trials? No, He never promised any of us that. But He promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, he's the real thing this morning, Brother Wendell. I'm thankful for that. He's the real thing this morning. He truly careth, as they sung that song, about each and every one of you. He didn't just give His life on the cross for me. He didn't just give His life for my family or this church. He gave His life for the whole world. No matter what color, no matter what nationality, no matter what language you speak, you're just as important as I am this morning. And if you're here and you're lost, God wants you to be saved. It's not His intent that any should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of Him, and that all would have everlasting life. If you go to hell, it will not be on God's terms. It will be on your own uh, just unbelief uh, that God gave His life for you, and your own pride will send you there. But I pray that everybody hears the call right from the window. I really do. I, maybe I don't know anybody's heart. It's not my job to know if you're saved or lost. I leave that up to God. It says that every man should work out his own soul, salvation with fear and trembling. And I firmly believe that this morning. I'm not uh, one that, you know, I know I don't know Brother Wendell real well. I met him uh, one time last year during the revival. And I'm thankful that I do know he's a brother of mine because I, I feel his spirit. And I, and I believe he is uh, my brother. But, you know, Brother Wendell, I'm not up here this morning for anybody to go home and say, oh, Brother, Brother Kyle, he can preach or he can't preach or anything like that. I am up here nothing but for the glory of God this morning. When He called me to preach, He just told me to go 
uh, sound out the warning that there was coming a day of judgment and that you must be born again. That's all I know how to do. I'm not a no great preacher. I don't I keep a book at home of how many sermons I preach or how many people's come to the altar while I've been preaching or anything like that. It's all about the glory of God, Brother David. Amen. It's all about Him this morning. If I stand up here this morning and fall flat on my face, it'll be in the glory of God. And I appreciate you. I, I can't tell you how much... How happy I am to be here this morning. I, when Brother Todd called me, I, I was I had mixed feelings. I tell you, I, I was looking forward to coming here and seeing all your faces that I hadn't seen in a while. But a great fear came about me because I tell you, I'm just as uh, nervous and fearful this morning as I was the last time or the first time standing up there. But uh, we don't know what we'll do this morning. We might just uh, talk a little bit. We might just uh, read some scripture. We feel like we're going to read quite a bit of scripture, and it might just be that. Uh, we read scripture this morning and sit down. I don't know, but as Brother Todd already said, this is God's hour this morning. This is not about Kyle. Just because y'all asked me to come this morning to stand, it doesn't mean that everybody else needs, needs to sit back and listen. But if God tells you, if you hear, and you've truly been saved by God's marvelous grace, you know that spirit he speaks in. And you know when he's bidding you to do something, and it'll be up between you and God uh, if you obey that this morning. It's not between me and you, it's between you and God this morning. We just ask that you pray for a few minutes as we <coughs> try to move a little bit. We're not nothing this morning. We still need your prayers as we said last time. We're very young in this and we don't know how to preach. Don't know that. We just know to trust in what God puts on our heart. That's all we know how to do this morning. But we will like to say how much we appreciate the kind words this morning. But the thought we want to leave with you this morning, we want... All of you to think about this as you go out through the day and through the next week. And I guess the topic of my discussion today would be no greater sacrifice. And I want you to think about this week about a sacrifice Jesus made. I can stand up here all day long, as I've already said, and I can talk about Jesus dying on the cross. And I can never in my words really tell you what that meant, to die on the cross. It really, I just can't comprehend it. I, if you can't wrap this carnal mind around giving your life on the cross. But I'm so thankful that he did one time. I want to read one verse of scripture, and then I'm going to read a, a good bit more later. But it says in John 15, 13th verse, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And I read that verse for a certain reason this morning. And all I know this morning is just to be as honest with you and just to be Kyle this morning. And that's all I'm going to do. And this week has been kind of a mixed feelings week for me. I've had a burdened heart. I've had a troubled heart. And I've had a joyful heart. I woke up this morning thankful for what God has put in my life. I couldn't help Brother Wendell to walk out and say, Thank you, God, for this house you gave me. Thank you, God, for this wife and this family you gave me. And thank you, God, most of all, that I've got the help to walk out of here to come to church this morning. Amen. But this past week, I felt, I don't know, Brother Wendell, my eyes were really, really open. And I want every single one of you to pray for a certain prayer request I have this morning. You might have seen it on the news this week, some of you, but a guy I graduated high school with and was a good friend of mine, died in Afghanistan, hit by a bomb, serving our country. His name was J.P. Walsh, and we graduated from North Cobb in 2002, and he played baseball there, and was a great guy. And, and I, I tell you that this morning, I, I'm not here just to talk about him, but I really want you to understand, because it, it opened my eyes this week, Brother Wendell. I heard about all my life people giving their life serving our country. And I've always had compassion for those people. I've always thought how terrible it was that they lost their life and their families and all that. But you know, it seems like we live in a day where we hear so much of that. We hear so much, especially since 2001, about people dying. It just kind of becomes something that you hear about and just kind of go on your way. You know, it's just another soldier that, that died. You know, we hear about that every single day. But... I guess it became real to me this week because this was somebody not just way off in a different state that I never knew or anything like that, but it hit right at home with me because 
This is somebody that I had spent time with. This is somebody that I was close to. This was somebody that had been to my house. This is somebody who I've been to their house and I've uh, spent time with them. I've went out to eat with them and spent... I knew this person as good as anybody can know them. I knew their spirit. I knew their soul. I knew everything. And I knew what he gave up to go over there. I just want to tell you a little bit about him this morning. You say, well, this don't have nothing to do with it. I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there on what this has to do with it in a minute. Y'all just pray for me. <clears throat> but... I want to tell you about JP. He was a, a young boy that graduated in 2002 like I did. He went on and, and went and played college baseball. And he went on and, and got a job. And he was graduated from Kennesaw State. Had a good job and all that. And in 2010, he joined the Army. And he got married right before that to a girl that I went to high school with also. I tell you that because what I guess opened my eyes is I realized that JP did not have to go over there. This was somebody who had it. He had everything he could want right here in a free country that was safe. He had everything. He had a wife. He had a degree. He had a job. He had a home. Everything. But he gave. It. He was willing to give it all up to go over there to serve our country because he knew that the way our world is right now and overseas and all that, that a freedom does come with a price. It really does. We live in the greatest country. I firmly believe that, and I'm thankful for that. And I realize that a lot of men and women have gave their lives that we have the freedom we are today. And I guess maybe I'm guilty of taking that for granted sometimes, Brother Wendell. I'm thankful for that this morning. But I just realized that he had everything right here. But he knew, and I really believe he knew when he joined the Army in 2010, that there was a chance. Uh, he was in a group as a paratrooper, and from what I hear, when you join that, you pretty much know there's a good chance you're going over there. And he knew there was a good chance he was going over there, and every soldier, I'm sure, knows there is a chance that they might not make it back one day. Did I believe that? No, because there's so many thousands and thousands and thousands of soldiers. You think, well, it surely can't happen to him. But it became real when I turned on the news the other day, brother, and I saw his face there. And he died. And I just realized what he gave. Because he just had a little boy back in November that's five months old. And he's got pictures of him holding it when he was born. But about two weeks later, he went off to Afghanistan. That boy will never know his dad. But I'm thankful for how much he gave up. I said that this morning because I want you to realize the sacrifice not only he made, but I want you to realize the sacrifice Christ made on Calvary this morning. Amen. I want you to realize that he gave it all and he did. He had to. You say, well, why did he have to? I want you to understand, I never really understood all this about the army and people losing their life. It never really hit home until it happened to somebody I knew. And you might be here this morning and you might be lost and you say, oh, well, I know uh, Jesus and I just don't know how to be saved and I don't know if I'm lost. I'm telling you, when it hits at home, you'll know you're lost this morning. Amen. And when it comes to your house, you'll know you're lost this morning. And uh, you may be here tonight and uh, today and you might have, you might be a husband, you might be a wife, you might be a grown person and you think, well, I know all about love and all that. Until you truly are born again, you don't know love. You don't Amen. know the love my God and Savior uh, is about until you know Him this morning. There's a difference in knowing of Him and there's a difference in knowing Him this morning. Amen. Now you can know all of Him all you want. The Bible tells us clearly that works aren't going to get us to heaven. Oh uh, yeah, it's good to be a good Christian person. If uh, God saves you and you've been born again, it's our duty. Listen, when we are baptized, we're uh, putting the old man down. We're bringing the new man up. And we're supposed to be Christ-like. Uh, well, none of us are perfect. I realize that. I realize that uh, as long as I live that I'm going to fail uh, to do exactly everything God wants me to do. None of us are perfect. But I'm here to tell you that when we are born again and we are baptized and we're uh, come back up, that's a symbol to the world uh, that Christ lives in us and we're a new person. And it's our duty uh, to take up the cross and walk and follow Him. It's our duty uh, to keep our lives where God wants us to be. It's our duty to keep our home and our children pointed in the direction of God. It's uh, my duty as this little boy comes on in my life. You realize it's not anybody else's duty, but it's mine and my wife's duty uh, to take this little boy to the house of God. It's our duty uh, to keep our home godly. It's our duty uh, to do what God puts in our heart. 
Uh, it's not anybody else's, Brother Wendell. It's not my, your responsibility uh, to bring that little bullet fella in here and uh, you to tell him about God. But it's my responsibility because if I've truly been born again and I truly uh, know this Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, then I should want everybody to know about it. Amen. And it's my desire. <laughs> it seems like... Uh, we let life slip us by so many times. That's the devil's uh, greatest tool he's got. It's just putting off. When I was lost, he never told me, Kyle, you don't want to be saved. He just told me to put it off. Uh, year after year, just put it off, put it off, put it off. And before you know, time will be no more and, and everything will be uh, cast away and, and time will be gone. And I thought about just how swiftly in my 28 years, uh, time's passing on. Uh, Sister Deanna talked about uh, us knowing each other when I was just a little kid. And it, Seems just like yesterday. I have a tapes at home of Deanna at a birthday party for Carrie when they were just real, real little and I was running around just a little rug rat. And it seemed just like yesterday, brother, that that was happening. Life swiftly is quit passing us by. We'll never be together together like this. I want you to understand that. We'll never be together together exactly like we are right now. Time is going to go on. It's just... One of these days, Brother James, me and you are going to bid each other adieu. I'm not going to see you anymore, brother. Now, whether it's you or whether it's me that passes, first of all, I don't know. It might be both of us called up together. I don't know that. But we're all going the ways of the earth. And we're all going to have to give an account for our life. It's between you and God this morning. I want you to know that. We're living in a world where people want to get in between God and the saint and the, the sinner that's lost. We're living in that world. We're having uh, men that want to be, they want to have great accolades of how many people uh, they brought to Christ. Listen, if I bring anybody through Christ this morning, it will be by delivering His Word and what He wants me to do and keeping my life uh, through His Spirit uh, to, get, to bid them to come to an altar one day. Listen, it's nothing in me this morning. I'll pass the ways of the earth and I'll stand right before God. It says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Lord Jesus. I want you to know there's really coming a day, one day after all, and that you and God will be just you and God right there. And you'll give an account for your life and your salvation. Uh, my wife, Lauren Brown, she uh, took my last name when we uh, joined together at that altar, but there'll come a separation day, brother. Uh, there'll come a day when they cause me out or her out first, and she'll sit right before God, and I won't be there. I won't be there to say, how you give an account for her life, but it'll be her and God. Amen. And if I have a son, brother, and he lives, and comes to the age of accountability, he'll have to come the same way I did, Amen. by the grace of God. There's no other way you can be saved except God. That's all I know to tell you. It's very, very simple this morning. Uh, Jesus is what you need. Amen. If you don't have Him, it's Jesus. Uh, except the blood, there's no substitute. Amen. When Adam and Eve were in the garden and they sinned, <clears throat> they were naked. And they had to cover themselves because they were exposed before God. Amen. If God speaks to your heart and He's troubled your soul, you're exposed and naked in the eyes of God. He knows exactly where you're at, and you can put it off, you can run, you can get outside the church, you can start uh, getting far away from God as you want, but there will come a day when you'll have to answer right before God Amen. and give an account for your life. I'm thankful for that this morning. You can escape these doors.